He was visiting the encamp Chedva, and 12-year-old Yecheved Brookstein's parents and grandparents came up to spend the day with her. Every summer, my grandparents would come with my parents to visit us, and I looked forward to it the entire time I was in camp. I was in my bunkhouse with my mother and my grandmother and my sister, and my grandfather and father were walking through the path of camp. And as they were walking through the camp, they saw another older man walking by them. And my father noticed my grandfather nod in acknowledgement to this elderly man. My father-in-law, who knew all of his father's acquaintances, friends, everybody in his life, said, who's that man? So he said, that was my best friend from before the war. I said, your best friend from before the war? Introduce me, I'd like to meet him. He said, no, it's better that, that we don't meet. And my father pressed him and said, I really would like to know what, what's, what's going on here, what's the story? Why don't you go over to him and hug him and speak to him, see how he's doing? And uh, my father then went on to tell me why he's not introducing me to him. My grandfather lived in Romania at the time, right before the Romanians were being deported. He had this very close friend. He and this friend learned together, spent a lot of time together. And his friend asked him, you know, what are you doing for your family? How are you saving them? How are you getting out? And my grandfather, who had foresight, had secured visas for himself and his wife and his child and his in-laws. And he told his friend, I actually have visas. We're getting out. And I put them in our hiding spot. The next day, I went to look for those visas. And Robbie, they were gone. And so was my friend with his entire family. He knew he hadn't told anybody else, and only the two of them knew about this particular area. He was deported to Auschwitz with his family. They were all killed, he survived. And he heard subsequently that this man had made it to the other side of Romania and had survived the war really with his family and made his way to America. Robbie was shocked. He said, Dad, because of him, your wife, your child, and your in-laws were killed in Auschwitz. Before I asked you, why don't you hug him? Now I'm asking you, how can you even look at him? I said, Robbie, let it go. I said, what do you mean let it go? What do you mean let it go? I can't, I can't believe what the... He says, listen to me, he said. It was a different time, it was a different place. People were under tremendous pressures. Everybody was looking out to do what they can to survive. It's over, there's nothing I can do about it. We have to go on. We've all experienced the pain of being hurt by someone else. The first step in resolving conflict and letting go of resentment is learning to be curious about the other person's experience. Asking questions like, what triggered them to act insensitively? And are they going through something difficult in their life that I don't know about? My father understood what had propelled this man to do what he did. Did he forgive him? He had killed his family and this man's family had survived. It's hard to forgive somebody for something like that. But he understood what he had done, and he was able to go forward. You let go of the past, you live life moving forward. There's no point to holding on to hurt or to anger. The only one you hurt in that process is yourself, not anyone else. This Tisha B'Av, let's commit to repairing the broken relationships in our lives so that we can bring Mashiach one step closer.